Hey, thank you, Chad. You know, it's Trial Tuesday, and today we are talking about motorcycle accidents with attorney David Ayler. And we bring this up because you were in a crash just over the weekend? I was, on New Year's Eve, actually. Wow, and, um, so I'm glad you're okay. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I made it. Um, but it was a little bit scary, and it was something that, you know, we've talked about so many different mm -hmm. times of these things happening, whether it be a car crash or a motorcycle accident. But mm -hmm. this was one I actually experienced, so I mm -hmm. thought it'd be something good to talk to the viewers about. Yeah, so just walk us. First of all, I knew you said you hurt your wrist a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I've got a few injuries, a little bit banged up, mm -hmm. uh, foot, wrist, hip, uh, things like that, and some back things. But as a whole, I'm here, and I'm moving, just going to do some treatment for a while okay. and uh, see how that goes. Well, I'm glad you're okay. And, you know, we talk about this all the time, what to right. do. And it, I don't want to say it's good, but the fact that you went through this, you literally did it step by step is what we're supposed to do. So first of all, just kind of walk me through the accident, the setup. Yeah, I, I was driving downtown on my motorcycle. I was actually mm -hmm. headed to my office and I was on King Street, which mm -hmm. a lot of the viewers are going to be familiar with. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a person in the right lane. Uh, I did notice that their tag was from out of state. Mm -hmm. uh, we we're both on King Street crossing over Calhoun. And uh, soon after we crossed over, the driver of the vehicle stopped his car mm -hmm. and then put on his turn signal. Now mm -hmm. he's in the right lane and I was in the left lane. Mm -hmm. and he was obviously going to try to get over to the parking lot mm -hmm. uh, that's right there on the left. So he's However, turning left from the right lane. He'd be lane. turning left from the right lane and mm -hmm. skipping over my lane. So as soon as I saw that, obviously I, I was paying attention to mm -hmm. make sure to see what he was going to do. He did put the turn signal on. Mm -hmm. However, then he did decide to go ahead and skip the lane mm -hmm. and came right into me. And so I, I ran directly into the side of his vehicle wow. on the driver's side, was able to push the bike out from under me mm -hmm. and then hit pretty, pretty hard uh, there on the ground there, right there on King Street. And of course, at that point, there were several citizens that were there that witnessed it. Mm -hmm. Uh, that were also assisting me while I was on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the fire department come and EMS and the police. Mm -hmm. um, and what was important, of course, uh, making sure that everyone was okay. And I wasn't feeling too hot at that point. Sure. Uh, but I was thinking and making sure that there's some witnesses had seen what mm -hmm. had happened because obviously the driver had been in error with what he mm -hmm. did. So once I was on the ambulance, uh, prior to them actually taking me away on the ambulance, I made sure that I asked for the police officer to come mm -hmm. into the uh, ambulance so I could make a statement. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave the scene without making a and statement. And that's what you always scene. say, and that's what I love. You're like, like right. I am in pain. I need to go to the hospital. I wasn't feeling I hot. Exactly. I'm going to give my statement. Yeah. And you were collecting witness statements as right. well. Right. Yeah. We're making sure that I was making sure that the officer knew. I said mm -hmm. this person saw it, that person, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the officer was very diligent what they were doing. But again, they could only do what they're allowed to do within the facts that they're given. Mm -hmm. So if they don't know who's watching, they don't know what's seen, mm -hmm. uh, then it's an issue. So of course, um, after I was taken to the hospital and while getting X-rays and things, the officer followed up with me. And believe it or not, this person who was in the other vehicle, who at first looked very scared, actually told the officer something that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. After I'd left in the ambulance, told the officers I had sped up and somehow tried to make it my fault. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wouldn't have been able to make that statement and there wouldn't have been some other factors in play, who knows, maybe the accident would have been uh, having me found at fault because my mm -hmm. bike, of course, was pushed way far away from the scene, mm -hmm. which I had gotten out from under. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lesson that I was actually talking about so much on here that mm -hmm. I had to learn myself a little bit the hard way, particularly hitting that pavement. Um, but it was something that, you know, again, mm -hmm. if I wouldn't have followed those steps through, you never know what will happen. And that driver realizes he hit the wrong motorcycle. Yeah, I hope so. He will. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, everything okay? Your motorcycle is it total? Uh, my motorcycle's total, oh, so geez. you have to deal with all that property mm -hmm. damage. Uh, going from that, I'm still in the process of doing that. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, I'm getting treatment. Um, there's several different fractures and things that I'm going to have to be dealing with related mm -hmm. to uh, injuries. And uh, it's not real easy to sleep right now, but at least uh -huh. I know that down the line it'll be okay. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm here talking to you today. so We're least, glad you're yeah. here. I mean, it had to have been surreal. Was it like slow motion going through all yeah, this? Yeah, very much so. No one that I could see what was about to happen and mm -hmm. I wasn't able to control it. So really important to make sure you're paying attention when you're mm -hmm. in a car or a motorcycle. Because if I wouldn't have been paying attention, looking around on King Street, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I might not have seen him put the turn signal on. Sure. And it was that point when I saw the turn signal, I thought he's about to skip that lane mm -hmm. and try to go all the way across. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did. What is your one biggest takeaway? Because, you know, I, was it because you were in pain and still trying to give your statement, most right. people just skip past that. They're not paying attention. Yeah, I, I think it's just the shock. You know, mm -hmm. when you're laying on the ground, the fire truck's there, people are asking you not to move. Everything's mm -hmm. happening so fast and it was for me too I wasn't sure you know what kind of spinal injury I may have that mm -hmm. sort of thing it was really just making sure that you try to keep calm yourself mm -hmm. uh, because it is surreal and then when it happens it happens so fast and then everything moves and a lot of times things happen so fast that you don't get to actually go back mm -hmm. and sort of replay it and walk it through and that mm -hmm. was why it was important to me even though I'm getting strapped up and getting my blood mm -hmm. pressure check and all that that I at least get to speak with that officer initial mm -hmm. officer initially uh, and then of course follow up thereafter but everyone was excellent in helping me it was uh, the people people in the area mm -hmm. were very nice as far as once we're laying there because, mm -hmm. you know, luckily there wasn't a car right behind me or they may sure. have been around. Sure, you were there. Someone was watching over you. Right. That's for sure. Well, glad to have you here. I'm glad, glad you're to be okay. Back.
take some time off. Can we just go <laughs> lie in bed for like a week? I wish just I could. I know I'm talking yeah. to the wrong person, yeah, but just too relax. Late for that. <laughs> relax. Such great advice, having you know been through it yourself. So well, trial Tuesday with attorney David Ayler, and up next, uh, we're going to shift gears. It's your chance to recycle those old, ridiculous bridesmaids' dresses. Details on the Charleston Museum's new bridal exhibit after the break.